Jazz at 6 with Bubba Jack. Send them members to support K Jazz 88.1. All the music you hear on Jazz at 6 is always available on our website, jazzandblues.org. That's jazzandblues.org. Got a couple of more numbers to play up to the top of the hour, and then we'll just step in with BWB. We're talking about breezing with Bubba. On Jazz is 6 and members of Florida K Jazz 88.1. Count AC.
I call the regular city council meeting for Monday, August 26, 2013, to order. Councilman Sloan, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please join me in saluting the flag of our great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Miller? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Deaton? Here. Councilman Levitt? Councilman Sloan? Here. Councilman Shanks? Here. With no objections, I so order that, that Councilman Levitt be excused from tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. Approval of agenda and waiver of full reading of resolutions and ordinance. By motion of the City Council, this is the time to notify the public of any changes to the agenda and or rearrange the order of the agenda. Ms. City Manager, do you have any changes to the agenda? No changes tonight, Mayor. Mr. City Attorney, do you have any? Not tonight. Do any council members have changes to the agenda? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Please vote. By a vote of four to zero, that motion is approved. There are no presentations or recognitions tonight. Oral communications. Except for the public hearing for agenda item K, this is the time, uh, this is time members of the public may address the city council regarding any items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the city council cannot address and discuss or take any action on any items not on the agenda unless authorized by law. Matters not on the agenda may at the council's discretion be referred to staff and placed on a future agenda. Those members of the public wishing to speak are asked to come forward to the microphone and state their name for the record. All speakers will be limited to five minutes. Any documents for review should be presented to the city clerk for distribution. Anyone who wishes to address the city council, please come to the podium. some notes here, but uh, uh, my name is William De Palma, and I am here representing the proposed electronic cigarette uh, location. Could you raise up the mic, please? Oh, sorry, sorry. <coughs> uh, Known as Evolution. Uh, so being fairly new residents to the city of Seal Beach, uh, my partner Victoria and I believe it is important that we introduce uh, a bit about ourselves and explain how electronic cigarettes work as well. Uh, we do this in hopes uh, that our intentions of opening a somewhat new type of business be better understood. Um, so with that being said, Victoria Towers, the other managing member of Evolution, has over 13 years of experience in real estate and development. She has been involved in owning and managing her own small businesses during that time. Uh, I myself have almost 10 years of uh, experience in small electronic retail sales. Uh, most recently, I have been a human resource consultant advising small businesses in particular about best practices in regards to employee management and government compliance. Uh, we believe our combined experiences make us a great team to run a business that requires a unique type of vigilance and understanding. Uh, so as previously noted, Vicki and I both cherish our lives in Seal Beach, where we hope to reside hopefully for the rest of our lives. Uh, we plan to show our appreciation for the town by operating our small business with the class and respect that Seal Beach deserves and demands. Um, so I wanted to let you all know a little bit about the inspiration and the reason that we even came up with the idea to start an electronic cigarette store. Uh, we understand that the industry uh, of electronic cigarettes is new to most. Uh, we find that the reason behind any negative attention it receives is simply due to the fact that there has not been enough information provided to the public. Um, it may seem to taboo to some as it once did to Vicki and I. Uh, the inspiration behind the idea for us to open an electronic cigarette location in Seal Beach uh, comes from a very personal experience for me. Uh, in September of last year, my grandfather was diagnosed with uh, cancer of both the lungs and the brain. 
being a three-pack-a-day smoker for over 40 years, it wasn't much of a surprise for my family, but it was still obviously very, very emotional. My grandfather, Warren, who since then has been receiving chemotherapy treatments, it's been very hard for him and my family to go through that. During that time, as most terminally ill smokers do, he continued to smoke. So he always stuck to his basic brand, menthols, and this obviously makes it much harder on the family since smoking is the cause of the illness. Almost six months ago, Victoria and I sent a package to my grandmother, and in that package contained a rechargeable electronic cigarette with a menthol-flavored e-liquid. The e-liquid, by the way, is the liquid that you use in an electronic cigarette for the vapor. We were told it would taste very similar to his brand in hopes that it might wean him off of the cigarettes themselves. At first, like most long-time smokers, he didn't like the idea, but because of the pleas and begging of my family, he gave it a try. It's been six months since his last tobacco cigarette. He hasn't touched one, hasn't even thought about it. His painful coughing has died down. His skin tone is returning to normal, and of course, his normal ashtray-smelling odor has gone away. So my family could not praise the electronic cigarette enough. Even his doctor had said that it very well may prolong his life since he did stop smoking cigarettes. So that's where the inspiration for the story comes from. I did want to give you some information, the quick and dirty, if you will, of how electronic cigarettes work. I think that's very important. And the first e-cig was invented, if you can believe it, in 1963 here in the U.S., but nobody knew about it because everybody smoked cigarettes. So it was... Excuse me, you have 30 seconds. Okay. So basically, the more recent one was invented in 2003, and since then, they've had a lot of advances in these electronic cigarettes. So in closing, I hope this information will help you in understanding the level of passion that Vicki and I have put into the business. This healthy alternative to tobacco is changing lives for the better, and we believe it's the ideal solution for the healthy and happy city of Seal Beach. This is the reason we've come to speak with you and hope that you will reconsider the passing of the urgency ordinance and allow us to resume the remodel and opening of Evolution at 1021 Pacific Coast Highway. We greatly look forward to working with everybody and to make sure the electronic solution is introduced properly into Seal Beach. And, of course, feel free to reach out to Victoria or I for anything. Thanks for your time. Public speaking really isn't my thing, so this should just be a few sentences. I'm Kevin Halpin, co-owner of Mac Fusion with my wife and I. We're an Apple dealer on Main Street, and I'm just quickly going to touch on the technical aspects of things. When we went to help Billy and Vicki get set up with their point-of-sale system, how elaborate the whole e-cig product line is is kind of overwhelming, and I think to have a company that's in town focus strictly on that and not other things is a really good thing for us because it is a good, we've got an employee, a close family member of mine also who's gone to e-cigs and they don't smell terrible and hopefully it will lengthen their life and I think this would be a good addition. Good evening. My name is Lisa Lee. I'm the Community Relations Director at the Youth Center. And I actually just wanted to thank the entire community for their support and all the families who trust the Youth Center with their children. I wanted to share some very exciting news with all of you. This year we were able to provide a record number of scholarships, in total 38, to children from families who would otherwise not be able to attend our summer camp. The generosity of this community makes this impressive number possible. Thank you. Also, for the first time in our 63-year history, the Youth Center provided music classes to children during the summer months. 
The Youth Center continues offering music classes during the school year as well to nearly 300 students. The Youth Center is proud to be the one and only organization that provides this valuable program to elementary school students locally. Again, thank you for helping to support this service. As always, we look forward to offering the only free after-school drop-in program to students in the area. As in the past, we anticipate having more than 300 children take advantage of this program this very year. Through the generosity and kindness of the community, we are proudly able to provide this safe, cost-free, supervised program to children and their families. Once again, thank you. Finally, we want to especially thank the City Council, supporters in Seal Beach and Run Seal Beach for the grant for sports equipment for our after-school program. The Youth Center would not have had any, any funding to purchase this equipment if we hadn't received the grant. I also want to sincerely thank the Seal Beach Lions and Leos for catering our first Leadership Academy breakfast graduation. You have all made a lasting difference in the lives of very many children. Again, thank you everyone for being a part of something positive. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council, staff, the public, Seth Eaker. Uh, Black Marble Consulting resident here in Old Town. What a pleasure to be before you again. It's also my pleasure to represent and speak in support pertaining to evolution. I didn't know much about electronic cigarettes either. I want to thank Mayor Pro Tem Deaton for the coffee talk and time that she spent to explore the idea with me and with Vicki. Also, uh, community services our Community Development Director Basham for his time and consideration. I think that oftentimes technologies and businesses are at the cutting edge and sometimes that's hard for communities to embrace or understand fully because as Billy pointed out, a lack of information. And an urgency ordinance that we're bringing forward here, I would urge you to reconsider either the duration of it from 45 days maybe down to 30 days or potentially not instituting it at all. The reason for that is fairly simple. Um, this urgency ordinance, I think, while staff needs time to explore uh, the issue of e-cigarettes, its potential ramifications, and Senate Bill 648, there is an opportunity not to penalize this business or necessarily penalize the nine other existing businesses in the city of Seal Beach that currently sell e-cigarettes of various types. The store that they're planning on bringing forward is high-end, carefully monitored, least regulated, and a clinically proven method to reduce traditional cigarette use. This primarily water vapor in the e-cigarettes, along with some other simple chemicals like propylene glycol, really have the 6,000 potentially or more carcinogenic chemicals absent. Further, because the vapor settles to the floor, because it's primarily water vapor, there's really no traditional secondhand smoke impacts. Though the state is considering through SB 648 treating it as traditional cigarettes, it still is unclear what impact, if any, that would have on the actual business transaction of these cigarettes, selling them. Whether or not you can smoke them in public spaces or in public buildings really is not necessarily relevant to the actual opening and operation of this business. It does seem like the applicant has tried to work with staff. Perhaps there was some misunderstanding. There's an opportunity to correct that. But I think an urgency ordinance comes forward but rarely in communities and really represents a sharp response on the part of staff and council to an immediate hazard. I would question whether or not this is an immediate hazard because it's been present for some time. It's been sold in nine businesses. I believe the applicants provided some lengthy evidence, but we are willing to explore with staff. So we would just ask your consideration maybe 30 days of a moratorium. And then also, what is going to happen to those nine businesses 
that are currently engaged in this activity. Have they been appropriately notified? Will there be code enforcement activity on them? And I want to be clear, too, that this ordinance stops lots of processes. So maybe an option could be to allow this applicant to continue to build out the retail space and allow this research to continue because retail use is permitted by right. So there does seem to be some gray area. I guess the best use of staff time seems to be collaboration, research, and finding out the best, safest methodology to implement this new technology in our community and ensuring that it is safe and fully compliant. I know as a business owner and a business advocate, I've had great conversations with Billy and Vicki. It seems clear that they live in town, they're focused on it, and they've been shopping local. Pretty much all of their business activity has been with local businesses. And isn't that terrific? Isn't that what we want in Seal Beach? Residents opening businesses, providing jobs, and shopping local? That sounds like the mantra we've been seconds. talking about a lot. Thank you, Proxen Dean. In any case, I think staff has done a good job of bringing forward issues. This is not a criticism to staff. This is a kind of an implorement to you as council to say, let's realize that this is going to have bigger impacts on this one business and other existing businesses right now. And is that the best use of time? Rather, the best use of time would be collaboration, investigation, and figuring out how we can make this work effectively for our town. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, staff, Robert Goldworth, Seal Beach. Um, I'd just like to speak briefly regarding item J, which is the uh, senior meal program that's currently get, getting hit by federal sequestration cutbacks. And I understand the proposal before you that you have on your consent calendar is to provide a supplement of about $1,250 a month from the general fund to the program to maintain it for the next nine months. Um, while staff explores some other options uh, for funding and service levels. Um, I would just like to make a couple of suggestions while staff is in this exploration process. Um, one is that uh, currently the program, um, it does not charge for the transportation, it does not charge for the lunches at all, but they, there is a um, donation program. Uh, the, the suggested amount is $3.00. And my understanding from staff is that about 60% of the people do donate. Um, I'm wondering if, if we were to publicize the fact that there's sequestration happening and that this program now is drawing from the general fund, um, maybe that donation rate could be increased. I think the participants should know um, that the program is under stress. Um, there is no uh, financial criteria for the program. It isn't just for impoverished seniors. And so perhaps more than 60% could contribute. And if they knew uh, that the program was being reviewed for possible cutbacks, we'd get better do donation rates. That's number one. Number two is that um, the, the program provides transportation from Leisure World. There's a bus at least from Leisure World for the lunch program. And the bus service starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and goes to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we pay for that through our contractor uh, Western Transit Services, they charge us about $50 an hour for that. So the bus service for the meals is about $300 a day. And I've never really understood why the, the transportation for a lunch program from Leisure World has to begin at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, my, what I'm being told is that, is that some of the seniors, they have, you know, do some socializing um, before lunch. And, and that's all well and good, but I'm not sure that, um, that we need to have the bus service start at 8 o'clock. If we were to start the bus service at 10 o'clock, that's $100 a day or 2000 a month. And the savings that you would get from that transportation could help, help offset the $80,000 that we're currently subsidizing the dial-a-ride program. It's all part of the same contract. So um, perhaps staff could look at that as well, um, the increasing donations by publicizing the situation and looking at the hours of operation for the bus service. Thank you.
Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Darren Smith, uh, CPA. I'm a resident of Seal Beach. I um, just wanted to say a, a few things uh, about um, uh, the, the business that uh, we're discussing here. Um, I, I'm their accountant and was very excited. Uh, oh, please talk into the microphone. I'm their accountant um, and was very excited about their business plan. Um, and, 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 are, and thinking this is a, you know, quite an exciting business actually to, to be brought to Seal Beach. Um, I, I see it expanding the, the tax base uh, in Seal Beach, um, and, and it's actually quite a quite a cutting edge prod, uh, product. Um, uh, obviously, there's a, um, a, a kind of a learning curve that's necessary to, to get up and understand the product, um, and it took me uh, quite a while to understand it as well. Um, but you know, having some time to actually analyze. What it is that they're that, that, that they're uh, doing, um, I was very excited to find out this has uh, actually got a lot of benefit in terms of of, of health and, and helping people uh, kind of the cessation of of, of smoking. Um, so much so that, that you know, as a also as a, as a father of two young children um, uh, here in Seal Beach, I certainly wouldn't have any problem with a, a business of this type um, um, being. Um, uh, established in Seal Beach, and uh, and would find that much more uh, within the you know with kind of uh, in, in a healthy environment as, as opposed to you know actual a smoke shop or whatnot being open in Seal Beach. So that being said, I you know I think this is a, a very exciting technology and it's something that's, that's coming. And in fact, it's already here in Seal Beach. I think we should um, uh, look to uh, having. Uh, a store that that is primarily doing this that can educate the uh, the, the, the purchaser of the product uh, as opposed to something that's necessarily bought at a, a 7-Eleven or a liquor store. So uh, anyway, those are my two cents. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vicki Towers. I am Billy's partner in Evolution. I'm here to address, hopefully setting aside, the Urgency Ordinance 1631 by explaining a little bit more about the vision of our business. Our objective is to enhance the city of Seal Beach by offering a non-offensive, healthful, non-conventional, alternative to traditional cigarettes. There are already surrounding retailers marketing these and selling these. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, it was relatively quiet, no complaints. And a lot of the issues that I think people are fearful about of, of this product have not been coming up as a result of the sales of the actual electronic cigarettes. What we want to do is differentiate ourselves from these other retailers that sell disposable electronic cigarettes, rechargeable, um, traditional cigarettes, chewing tobacco, um, liquor, food, you name it. We want to focus strictly on the higher end, rechargeable, non-disposable, electronic cigarettes. We are not permitted to sell tobacco products, nor are we permitted to sell any type of paraphernalia or merchandise that could any way remotely be associated with illicit drug use. This is restricted in our lease agreement with Regency, and Regency vetted us very um, thoroughly when we were, when we first brought this concept to them. We understand that this is a very recent concept, especially to um, a small, coastal, beautiful city like Seal Beach. We also understand that it poses certain challenges to the planning department regarding zoning and schools and a variety of other things. We want to allay those concerns and stress that we want to partner with the city and assist in creating reasonable guidelines to govern our type of business so it will be 
operated responsibly. We recognized, even without any state, local, federal regulations, that ours is the type of business that requires, to a certain extent, self-regulation, in that we have always planned on only selling to 18 and older, requiring photo ID, actively enforcing that policy. We only want to carry American-made liquids that are processed according to certain standards put in place by this industry. Smoking of any traditional tobacco products are absolutely prohibited on our premises, and all of these policies will be conspicuously posted and vigilantly followed through on. Our real goal is to provide a bridge to help people quit smoking. In an effort to do that, we want to offer a variety of promotions and quit smoking incentives to the city. Some suggestions have been to provide a discount to local business owners and have a residence day, where residents of Seal Beach can come and get a discount and try these out. There has been a lot of controversy surrounding these, and a lot of it, again, is because of the lack of information that's been available to the public on this. They are a relatively new concept, and what our store is intended to be is an education center for those people that want to try them. It will focus strictly on that. We have no other products other than some ancillary apparel, housewares, and perhaps some art from local artists in Seal Beach, where we can promote them and promote other businesses. One of the biggest issues with the health concerns with electronic cigarettes has been with the e-liquid. Your time is almost up. Okay. Well, at the risk of forgetting to be able to do this, I want to thank Ellery for her time on Saturday, for listening to me and being receptive to our vision and allowing it to come to the forefront where we can have some thoughtful dialogue about it rather than just putting it aside and hoping it goes away or pushing it away by passing this ordinance. So, again, in closing, we urge you to set 1631 aside or at the very least reduce the 45-day moratorium and allow us to proceed with our remodel so we can get up and running when we are able to get our arms around this and work with us. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council? Seeing no one, I declare all communications is now closed. Mr. City Attorney, do you have a report? Not tonight. Mr. City Manager, do you have a report? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Do any council people wish to make a comment? Nothing tonight. Are we? Yes, I just have one thing. Um, I would like to make an announcement that a week from tomorrow, the day after Labor Day, we will be breaking ground to uh, put in the new lights on Main Street. And while I know it will be inconvenient for all of us for a short period of time, we will be putting in lights that are very similar to those on the pier and uh, going back to the type of light that was historical to our town. So uh, just to let everyone know that to expect some construction on Main Street for the next couple months. Thank you. Okay, there are no council items tonight. The consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and are enacted by one single motion with exception of items previously polled by the council, which there were none. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented? So moved. So moved. Second. Please vote. That passes by a vote of four to zero.
public hearing. This is the time and the place for a public hearing for consideration of item K, uh, adjustment to public works contracts. The city manager, do you have a uh, staff report? Yes, Mayor. Public Works Director Sean Crumby will present this item to you tonight. Sean? Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. Uh, item K on the agenda uh, is a recommendation to adopt Resolution 6405. Uh, this resolution will adjust the threshold for public works, uh, for uh, bidding of public works contracts and increase it. Um, that threshold has not been increased since um, August 10th of 2009. Uh, the increase is uh, set within our city charter, section 1010. Uh, this increase will um, raise the amount to uh, 28797 The one thing I would uh, like to stress is that even though this, uh, this bidding threshold gets increased, it does not preclude or does not uh, prevent the staff from following through on all the requirements of bidding, uh, competitive bids, and all those sorts of things. So um, the recommended action is to uh, have a hold a public hearing and then approve resolution 6405. So with that, I'm available to answer any questions that you have. Do any members of the council have questions at this time? Not at this time. Okay. I hereby open the public hearing. Any members of the audience who wish to speak on this matter, please come to the microphone and state your name for the record. All speakers will be limited to five minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and staff. Robert Goldberg again. Um, I'm not opposed to the recommendation by staff um, as it applies to public works contracts. Um, but my understanding, and I hope I'll, you know, I can be corrected if I'm wrong, is that this new threshold of 28,797 will apply not just to public works contracts, but to other contracts uh, that this city has. It will also uh, be a new threshold below which uh, the city manager will be authorized to sign contracts for uh, without your approval or without a staff report so that the public knows what is being um, worked on, what's being contracted. Um, if, I'm, if I'm wrong about that, I stand corrected. Um, I am concerned about that aspect of it. Um, I really think that the public needs to know when, this, when the city hires contractors to do various projects. I think the public really needs to know about that. And I'm, maybe you need some dollar threshold, but um, 20, 29,000 or close to 29,000 to me is too high. Um, and I'll give you three examples of contracts that have been let in the last uh, six months or so um, that I would have liked to have commented on before we, we did so. Um, I know about them because I follow the city's checkbook, and so when the, the checks are cut to these contractors, I see them, and if I see something that I don't recognize from the budget or I don't, that we haven't talked about, um, I try to find more information about them. Um, so, for example, there was a check cut in February to SAE Communications for almost $20,000, and SAE Communications um, is a consulting firm that helps cities and state agencies and corporations define their goals, set clear objectives, strategies, and train their staff. Um, what exactly SAE did for us, I don't know. Um, the $20,000 is a lot of money. You know, when we, we go through the budget process and we tell the public that we can't cut the utility tax, we have an 11% utility tax, which is one of the highest in the state, and we can't cut that utility tax. Um, but we're letting these contracts, and the public doesn't get a chance to comment on them before we let them, I think there's a problem. So that was $20,000 in February. Um, in May and June, uh, there was about $8,600 uh, paid to management partners, and that was to develop an in-house staffing model and cost comparison related to our building inspectors. And... Um, you know, we were told at the budget workshop that the staff was looking at that and they did a cost analysis. We were told that $9,000 was being spent for a consultant to do that study. Um, I've actually done a public record request to get a copy of that study, and I was told there was no, there was no study for them to give to me. So I don't know what we got for $9,000. Um, and lastly, the most recent one was a check cut to... 
Dale Christensen, who's a structural engineer, and that was for a structural assessment of the police station. That was for a little bit over $5,000. So is there something going on at the police station? We just spent $80,000 on furniture, and now we're spending $5,000 on a structural assessment, which means there could be a seismic problem there. And I know a former city manager once told me that that police station is probably next on the list to be replaced. But my point is that all three of these things, they all may be very valid, but I don't know. Why couldn't staff have come to you all, to the public, with a staff report and said, look, these three things are very important. We'd like to have a consultant do it, and this is the cost, et cetera, et cetera. You would bring the operations of the organization up front and more transparent. It just seems like over the last couple of years that a lot of what's going on now is just behind the scenes. It's not just me who said that. Several other people I've spoken to also feel that we don't have as much transparency in the government operations over the last two years as we've had before. Just as an example, this is a copy of a staff report from 2008 for a contract for armored car services. You have 30 seconds. Thank you. This contract was for only $6,000 a year, but it was on a staff agenda and the public could see it. So that's the issue that I'm concerned about, and maybe that's not for discussion tonight, but I certainly would like to see discussion on that in the future. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the council on this matter? Seeing no one, I hereby declare the public hearing closed. Do any council people have additional questions or comments? I have a question, a comment, but do you want to go first? I just would follow up on that statement and ask, does this cover all contracts or just public works? This authorizes the city manager the ability to award contracts. So it's a variety of contracts of a variety of nature, but it's predominantly designed to go forward with public works contracts. Okay. Thank you. The other comment I would make is that these are for items or projects that are budgeted for. This isn't money in addition to what we budgeted for. In that case, we'd have to come back to you and request a budget amendment. So these are items that are budgeted within our budget, and with this amount would give me the authority to award the contracts and go through the process that Sean's described to you tonight. It's not any different than we've been doing in this city for several years. Exactly. The limit was like $25,000 or $26,000. And that was my point, that these are budgeted items, so it's not like the city manager is just spending money without any control over the situation. And also we have the councils aware of some of these events that go on. So as a council, we know what's taken place in February, as an example, the goal-setting meeting. So it's not like we don't know what's happening with the city's money, and we haven't budgeted the other items. So I don't have the concern. I don't know where the rest of the council is. Councilman Sloan? Just one quick question. It's $3,000 over the previous amount. Is that correct? That's correct. And when was it last evaluated? It was last adjusted in August of 2009. Okay. I would also point out that one of the examples brought forward was that structural assessment of the police department. That item was approved by the council in the capital improvement program for 2012-13. It was a separate line item in the CIP. So it wasn't as if that project wasn't openly discussed. It was openly discussed in the budget hearings for the capital improvement program. Okay. I think that's a very, very important point for the public to understand, is that when it comes to the transparency and being able to see what's going on and having discussions about it, it's happening. It's happening during the budget times that are well advertised that everyone can come to. It's happening through every single meeting that we have. If there is a contract that we budgeted for and then the city manager goes ahead and lets it at that time, it's already been discussed. So it's not like something is happening behind closed doors that only the city manager knows about. It's been vetted. Okay. Is there a motion to adjust the bidding threshold to $28,797? Is that a motion? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
$7 for public works contracts as authorized under the city charter section 1010. So move. Second. Please vote. May I be to adopt resolution number 6405. Thank you. Okay. That passes 4-0. <laughs> There is no unfinished or continued business tonight. We have a new business item. It's item L, urgency ordinance for temporary, a temporary moratorium. The city manager, do you have a staff report? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Our community development director, Jim Basham, will present this item tonight. Jim. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of city council. The adoption of the urgency ordinance uh, this before this evening would afford staff additional time to research this new and growing trend that's um, in our community is, is um, referred to as electronic cigarettes or in short e-cigarettes. Um, staff has been receiving a number of increased calls relating to e-cigarette businesses and other smoke relating businesses. And in researching our municipal code, we have very little regulations that would support um, our decision as to which way we would go if we allow or not allow such a use. And given the fact that there's so much uh, regulations that are out there and, and as stated uh, this evening through public testimony, it's a growing trend. There's a lot of pros and cons in regards to e-cigarette establishments. Um, there's a number of cities throughout California that are also looking at moratoriums and some have already adopted moratoriums on, on e-cigarettes and other smoke related businesses. And it's a precautionary measure. Um, whenever we get a new type of business in, in the community and it's a growing trend and it has a potential to have impacts, staff is obligated to research as much as possible to determine as to how we can permit the use. So the urgency ordinance that's before you tonight, as stated, it, it would help staff. It would give us additional time to research um, this use, uh, make sure that if we do apply regulations, what type of regulations, and it also give us the opportunity to come back to you with um, adequate findings as to which way we would support this project. So that would conclude staff's presentation, and staff would recommend the city council move forward and adopt the urgency ordinance before you this evening. Any council people? I have a question. Um, Quinn, could we move this to a 30-day ordinance rather than a 45? Well, under state law, the state law provides for that the ordinance will have no further fo fo uh, force or effect for 45 days. And so the state law doesn't allow us to go under 45 days. But as a practical matter, because of our schedule, if you adopt this ordinance tonight, you'll have to come back um, on September 23rd, which is less than 30 days. So as a practical matter, you'll be looking at this issue um, with, it, well, actually less than 30 days, probably about 27 days if you do the math. And so we're recommending that if you do adopt this ordinance, that be for 45 days consistent with state law with the recognition that the public hearing is going to be on September 23rd anyway. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I think that that uh, there's questions by other communities. There's um, legislation. The legislators have questions, and so I think it's a good idea to give staff time to research this so they give us a knowledgeable recommendation. I would recommend that we support this motion by staff. Anyway, is there a motion to uh, <clears throat> to adopt urgency ordinance 1631U? I move we adopt it and I'm sorry. Second. And uh, look forward to receiving it in less than 30 days. Please vote. That passes on a 4 to 0 vote. So that was ordinance number 1631-U, an urgency ordinance for the city of Seal Beach declaring a moratorium on the establishment and operation of any smoke shop, electronic cigarette retailer, a drug paraphernalia retailer. Okay. Uh, once again, that um, will be valid for 45 days. And because of our schedule, 
Um, staff will be scheduling a public hearing to consider extending the um, urgency ordinance on September 23rd. I have a, a point of clarification. So the public hearing is to talk about extending it. Could it, I don't exactly understand that. What, what is the public hearing for? The public hearing is for two purposes. It's to provide an opportunity for the city council to extend it the urgency ordinance for 10 months and 15 days if staff needs further time to study the issue. Um, it also provides you an opportunity to say we've looked at this issue and uh, we do not want to extend it. So you, you'll have a full range of options on the 23rd. Okay. Very good. Or, or we could have an ordinance by that time? Yes, but I don't know. It's, it's really... Uh, a short period, and if we're going to be changing, uh, recommending changes to the zoning code, it would have to go to the planning commissioner first. Okay, so we are looking at a lengthy process, no matter how you, typically, no yes. matter how many days you do that urgency ordinance. Uh, typically, um, once again, if we're going to be recommending changes to the zoning code, it would have to go to the planning commission. You'll have public hearings before the planning commission and city council. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, adjournment. The, the September 9th, 2013 council meeting is canceled due to a lack of business. Uh, therefore, with no objections, the city council meeting is adjourned to Monday, September 23rd, 2013 at 6 p.m. to meet in closed session if deemed necessary. We're adjourned.